on Saturday night, Peter Dutton said the one test of his leadership was Liberal Party internals. Today's decision is about Liberal Party internals. It has nothing to do with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people or taking Australia forward together. The referendum later this year is about two things. It's about recognition and it's about listening. And the Australian people will decide this referendum, not politicians. The Constitution is the people's document. The only Australian and only Australian people can change the Constitution. We need to listen to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people on the ground in communities. Listen to the needs and aspirations. Listen to how issues can be solved together and create a better future for everybody. There has been consultation with First Nations people right across Australia. Mr Dutton's criticism is predictable. But despite his obsession, their obsession with the Prime Minister, this is not about politicians. This is about closing the gap. Our guiding principle in this debate has been the Uluru Statement from the Heart. The generous request for First Nation leaders to the Australian people to walk together to a better future. And I quote the Uluru Statement. We seek constitutional reforms to empower our people to take a rightful place in this country. When we have power over our destiny, our children will flourish. They will walk in two worlds and their culture will be a gift to their country. The Uluru Statement came from regional dialogues with the input of over a thousand First Nations people across the country. This is about constitutional recognition. Recognition that makes a practical difference on the ground for Indigenous people. Recognition that can help close the gap. Recognition of the 65,000 years of connection to country and culture. Unfortunately, Mr Dutton doesn't know where he stands. Mr Dutton is tying himself in knots. Apparently, he's for a voice, but against it. And his backbenchers won't be bound by this position. That's about as clear as mud. Now, the Prime Minister has met with Mr Dutton seven times. Seven times. And at no time did Mr Dutton make suggestions to the constitutional amendments. If Mr Dutton supported the voice, he would have supported Ken Wyatt's proposal in the Morrison government, and he didn't. Today is also the anniversary of the release of the Bringing Them Home report. That landmark report released in 1997 called on the Australian government to apologise to the stolen generations. It took a while. But in 2008, Prime Minister Rudd apologised, alongside with Anthony Albanese and almost all others in the parliament. But Mr Dutton boycotted the apology. And I hope Mr Dutton doesn't repeat his mistakes of the past. I know there are many good Liberals and Senators who support constitutional recognition. MPs like Bridget Archer, who I travelled to Flinders Island with recently. 
I also want to acknowledge the continued strong support from all states and territories um, and the support, their support through their leadership, through premiers and chief ministers of constitutional recognition. I want to say loud and clear, loud and clear, the Labor government supports regional voices. Regional voices are already being rolled out in places like South Australia and Victoria, where there has been much progress. The voice will make sure that voices in remote and regional communities are heard. And it's simply misleading for Mr Dutton to suggest anything otherwise. I believe that the 2023 referendum will unite Australia. It will bring people together and it will move Australia forward for a better future. So together, we say yes to the Uluru Statement from the heart. And together, let's say yes to constitutional recognition through the voice. Happy to take questions. Mr Bunny, what would be the consequences for uh, Indigenous Australians and Australia more broadly if the voice referendum was to fail? The voice referendum um, is something that will be one of the most uniting moments in this country. I believe in the, f and I have faith, I believe and I have faith in the Australian people that they will see that recognition, finally, of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander in the Constitution, its time has come. We look forward to a successful referendum later this year. Mr. Byrne, um, would, you, would you consider changing the wording of the, of the amendment to bring coalition front friendship on site? There has been a extensive months and months and months of consultation with the First Nation communities right across this country through the, uh, the constitutional sorry through the constitutional uh, working group through the referendum working group through the referendum expert panel uh, on legal matters we have worked assiduously we have worked faithfully and we have worked carefully to make sure that the question and the amendments are the ones that are going to provide uh, what is envisaged by the voice and also be very, very clear in terms of the role of the parliament and its, uh, its role in uh, putting the voice forward. And I have to say very, very definitely that the consultation process has been careful, has been deliberate and has been thorough. And we believe that we have arrived at the right questions and the right amendments to the Constitution. Are you concerned that this will hurt referendum The uh, position of the government has been very clear for a very long time. Uh, there will be a referendum later this year between the months of October and December. And at the end of the day, this is not a political plaything. This is a decision that the Australian people will make. And I have faith in the Australian people. Could the government have done more to try and achieve bipartisanship on this issue? The Prime Minister has met with uh, the Leader of the Opposition seven times. Seven times. And not, not at one point did the Leader of the Opposition offer any uh, changes to the amendments, changes to the words. And what we see now is very similar to what the Prime Minister put forward in August last year at Gama. Uh, we believe that we have worked very closely 
and I have had many meetings with uh, the Shadow Minister and our door has always been open. We've made that extremely clear uh, right from the very beginning of this, uh, this last, or this last part of the process. And let's remember, the Uluru Statement has not fallen from the sky in the last six months. It was released to the Australian people as an invitation almost six years ago. And there have been at least 10 years, 10 years of reports, work, reports, lots of work, lots of committees that have brought us to today. Last question. Minister Bailey, if I could just follow up from a previous question. You, could you answer whether this is a blow or not to the, you know, to the prospect of a successful referendum? I can only repeat what I've said. I hope that uh, the uh, Liberal Party is not repeating mistakes of the past. There is enormous support and momentum in the Australian community for this referendum. People want to live in a country where there is proper recognition of an amazing gift that Aboriginal people bring to this country, the oldest continuous surviving culture on the planet. Uh, I truly hope uh, that the Liberal Party uh, re-examines its position but I can assure you that the government is committed, along with tens of thousands, millions of Australians, towards recognition and making sure that we have a mechanism that is going to move the dial on the unacceptable closing the gap targets in Australia. Thank you. That's it. Thank you.